Hi. Yeah, yeah. Hena, thank you so much for doing this. And <laughs> at the start of it, let me just warn you, I'm going to ask you one question multiple times. And that question is, why is it important? We're essentially peeling the onion here. And the it for you is, you know, uh, why do we need new voices, new galleries? You're a young upcoming gallery in India. And... Uh, we like champions put out our email id and contact number to everybody and people have requested your interview and in a way <laughs> i think the student population the art students in this country uh, essentially for some reason your uh, you are uh, indicate your the new your new gallery coming up is indicative of a new kind of visual language and a new kind of uh, hope because the old galleries have kind of in a way i don't mind saying it saturated uh, but i'd like to have a chat with you about what you feel for it so you have in 2 minutes would you like to kind of introduce yourself and your gallery so my name is hena kapadia uh, my gallery is called tark uh, tark is based in bombay and we've been here since 2014 um it's been 7 years i can't believe it um but um kind of we open up the gallery with the idea that it would be a place for young voices and young artists to have a serious place to show their work um we wanted to kind of also create a community of uh people who love art who can keep coming to the gallery who have a place where they can discuss art look at it and kind of enjoy everything that the art world has to offer and we also wanted to build a community of young collectors who could help us grow with our artists as the gallery grows let's start i'm going to take you through a bunch of questions i have so many to ask you i want to like ask you you know you have you have a tough job I've I've not seen you smile inside the gallery. I've seen you smile when you're when traveling. No, <laughs> I, I love being in the gallery. <laughs> no, I'm sure you love being in the gallery, but it's a full-time job. I just kind of want to ask it you, is. you know, um, so students don't know this, uh, the artists don't know, maybe know this or like the visitors don't know this, but um, simply put, my question is how tough is your job? You have overheads, you know, rents, bills. Uh, I'm sure you know so the collectors they kind of like don't understand why they shouldn't go to the artist directly uh, sometimes you know the artist doesn't know why you charge uh, a cut and you know we're living in a world which is uh, which has the no broker app for the property rentals so in a world <laughs> where people are kind of like they don't want to give a cut to anybody uh, i just want to ask you how tough is your job So I think I think my, so I think my job is tough but I think it's uh, I love it so it doesn't feel like work I I really enjoy coming to work every day um but what I would say is um you know talking about the, the you know this no broker app and like what does the gallery even do and why shouldn't the collector buy straight from the artist yeah. um it's a question we get a lot um we I think we add a lot of um value to what artists do yeah. um i think if i'm doing my job right the artist should not mind paying me my commission yeah. um because i take a lot of work off of their plates right um one of our artists who you know as well pratap more actually jokes once the work is over he's like now my work is over and now it's your problem that's nice that's pretty pretty, profe- that's it, pretty professional right and 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 that kind of that's kind of what we do so i also we also as everyone like we have artists who get approached to sell stuff from their studio yeah. and i'm like look if you want to sell it from your studio and you want to sell it to this person please do especially if it's like friends and family and people i don't know but they know i'm like please sell it from your studio but please sell it as full price because don't see what i am taking as an add on yeah. see what i am taking as a charge for what i do If you're doing all the work that I'm doing, you should charge the client the same amount of money. That's true. That's true. I just want to peel, right? peel the onion a little more. Can you please articulate what is it that you do? I know what you do, but I just want to like, in a way, so, in, in a way, the artist is doing the artwork. You have space. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You have space. Yes. And you engage with the larger audience. Obviously, you you are correct. The gallery. Yeah. And in that yeah. sense. Um, so when it's engaged with the art, larger audience, one it's uh, it's several levels, right? One is our community, which we spend a lot of time building. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of people. Actually, it's been really heartening to see people again post like 
through the pandemic like every time the lockdown lifts we have a lot of people coming in and being like oh thank god you know uh, we can come back and it's so much fun to be back and like you know we're enjoying the shows and i'm happy you're open and things like that yeah. so that's our community of visitors then we have a community of art collectors so we have we there are a lot of collectors we've gotten to know over the last few years um who keep coming back to the gallery who are excited to see what our artists are up to um and who um eventually hopefully will create meaningful collections that will go into institutions or will go you know from one generation to the next or you know will find a, a place in history in the future basically so and, yes. and and why is that important um i well the people have issues with this but the i mean ultimately the fact is that the, the way the art world works just now is your legacy is kind of preserved through institutions or from one generation to the next right and this is a very basic uh it's the very basic premise on which the art world functions today there are a lot of questions of who should be allowed to have museums how should museums be allowed to function and those are all kind of not separate questions but those are questions that exist in parallel to what we do yeah um but are you biased and then the third i'm sorry, sorry. i'm sorry i was going to ask you are you biased if you had two clients one was an institutional buyer collector and the other was let's say someone like me a nobody <laughs> you'd obviously uh, is it is it just is it just the sale or the why i'm asking you why is it important is because why is it yeah. important why is institutional um uh, Uh, say but when you say so so my my thing is when you say i'm just a buyer like very honestly uh, no one is just a buyer i think eventually everyone wants to see the artwork on their wall so have a legacy yes yeah, so um i think uh, i don't think it's just the sale or it's just the institution i think it's a happy medium where where there are works that go into private collections but there are also works that go into institutions so that's true uh, I, keep a healthy balance like um and also there's a very kind of clear um i don't know if i don't know if you've been to the gallery um uh, but there's a very kind of clear mandate that if you walk into that someone should come down says greet you and offer to show you around the exhibition you should not feel alone when you enter the gallery that's nice um and that also comes from a place of um of several conversations that we've been having with people being like you know someone who's unfamiliar with the art world will come up and say who do you all think you're la we have so much money and the gallerists don't give us the time of day like what do you mean this and i'm like you know actually maybe in the past it was true that gatekeeping was required and things like that but i think with my generation with our generation i think it's important to include as many people as possible and have as many conversations as possible so yeah. that you don't lose out on a generation of new collectors right yeah yeah that's true you are also by the way um side like so side topic you have 15k followers yeah. on instagram i think one of the largest you like uh the the gallery the gallery has uh close to 19 now oh 19 we I, work very hard on it i just saw it a few weeks back it was 15 oh lovely how what what is yeah. happening are you are you secretly paying <laughs> are you is this organic no <laughs> i'm just asking um, i mean <laughs> it's all organic uh, we amazing. do we do pay for ads uh, because yeah. advertising um, i mean before instagram we used to actually pay for print advertisements oh. we still pay for some um, especially to support publications that we uh, want we can support um, but uh, when we stopped paying for print ads and started paying for digital ads the spend actually came down by like 10x oh, wow. basically it's 10x less than wow. i think you've answered your own question in the introduction of why is it important because i think the fact that there are so many students reaching out to you and there are so many students with opinions um is what kind of like is why we need galleries right i just want on a very personal note where are you getting sure. where are you getting your your names from like your name is henna and then the name turk the first time i heard it, i was like wow what a beautiful name uh to give a gallery it's a beautiful name how, how where are you coming up with this thank you uh in terms of naming unfortunately i cannot take credit for naming myself uh that credit actually goes to my aunt uh whose name is hema 
um, and then and and of course, and then when I was born, you know, they, whatever the henna was decided at that point. Um, but Tark actually came from uh, kind of a long time of looking for a word um, that meant dialogue. Yeah. Uh, so Tark actually can go. Get that, that can go one of two extremes, right? On one end, it can mean kind of discussion, dialogue, debate. Um, and then at the other end, it can also mean argument, um, which I think is really interesting because I think um, I think the visual, art, visual arts needs to be a conversation. Yeah. There needs to be dialogue. Um, it's not a one-way kind of street. There needs to be, whether it's between artists and gallerists, artists and collector, artists and other artists, I think these dialogues are really, really important. And that's where that kind of came from. That's amazing. But when you... Well, did you jam with somebody to make this name up or was it like something that from a book you read or because it's a beautiful name it actually so i actually started with a very boring uh uh not boring a uh, very kind of academic word which was dialectic yeah um the hegelian dialectic yeah. and then i was like well i can't exactly name my gallery dialectic because i feel like that um and so then kind of started looking and i also wanted it to be something indian so that comes from sanskrit um oh i didn't know that so i wanted it yeah so i wanted it to be something with an with an indian root uh so kind of went uh you know google crazy looking up different ways to say dialectic and eventually that came up and that was, yeah i'm just like curious on a personal front yeah. you just a mother again uh again yeah <laughs> no no first, first last finish you you yeah. so let me just say that again just slightly personal i just wanted to ask you i'm just curious what did you name your your mother yeah. your mother now so what did you name your child i so we named our son uh, kabir oh lovely i hope thank god it's yeah. not dialectic now this time <laughs> no it's not I, i couldn't be like oh hey dialectic child <laughs> but that's a joke right tark is my first child and kabir is the second so. that's nice a beautiful name lovely you was you were speaking about you know institutional um, uh, people from institutions buying it and keeping a legacy so like sp- specifically for you because once you know the artist says that i'm done with my artwork it's handed over to you now you take the artwork to the, its next round which is to put it out there now i'm sure you're yeah. you're a business person so in that sense i want to ask you do you care about anything other than your business like ideas like i don't know national agenda cultural capital art politics education culture aesthetics or is it just like is it just business it's business <laughs> no, no no so if it was just business it would be a very different model i think it would be a much more lucrative model um, <laughs> really a, a lot of uh, you know a lot of a lot of queries that we get is oh i need something that matches my sofa and you know while that is important that's not you get the that? ultimate goal of the artists we work with right you, you get that now people still ask you that we still get it of course we you, still get it wanna... and it's not just it's not just at that there have been there are stories of collectors taking uh, a swatch of sofa fabric yeah. has been taken to an art space to check if the very expensive artwork matches the sofa you took the oh my god that's true so do you want to do you want to look in the camera so it happened do you want do you want to look in the camera and speak to this uh, this kind of person and co- maybe correct something in them no i it's not my job to correct them if it's if it's for you it's more important like and and i don't see anything wrong with wanting something that matches your sofa now, now how do i correct for that i buy a gray sofa and everything matches it but uh, yeah. you know those are those are personal preferences and personal taste and it's not my place to tell you True. why you should buy an artwork it's my place to tell you why the artwork was made um why it's a value who this artist is like that's what i'm here for my my initial question was is there anything you as henna as the gallerist of turk to make the sale do you go into larger conversations with your buyers about education politics you know cultural capital culture aesthetics or is it just about the singular artwork and the context of that work it depends on the collector but yeah i think most of our collectors are excited to hear more about the artwork and more about why it was made and you know those kind of things because a lot of our collectors are much younger oh. um so they do also care about what they're putting up on their walls i think um yeah. and not to say our older collectors don't actually have had wonderful co- conversations with most of our collectors yeah um about the artwork that they're buying about um the artists there are some collectors who we've unfortunately only had conversations with and haven't had acquisitions from but that's also part of the job right change soon <laughs> yeah yeah 
hopefully so is is uh, yeah. you know also this this journey of making of being a gallerist makes you interact with your artists i just want to ask you you are not artistically inclined or are you oh no 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 i was uh, sketching like a, a floor plan for one of our shows and the curator was like thank god henna you are not an artist i was like no no i don't even pretend to be like i no. yeah no so a lot you know rubbing ta- rubbing shoulders with artists spending so much time with them i'm sure there are certain uh, i don't know some features about an artist that maybe you want to explain to a larger audience saying that you know something that you learned from artists and something that maybe you should you, sh- you feel like telling your clients that you know artists are different or are they or are they not i just want to ask you your personal opinion you know do you ever wonder about what's happening in the art- artist's mind about so freedom. actually kind of going like i want to merge the last question and this one of like what do you care about as a gallerist and those kind of things yeah. um i think as a gallerist i also care about the things that the artists i work with care about um and a lot of those things include like uh identity history archiving um nature the environment but these are all kind of uh these are all kind of concerns of the time mm mm-hmm. um so i think uh i think what i learn most from artists is what they make like through what they're making what they're trying to say yeah um but um yeah and then, and the other thing i've learned actually from artists is patience like how so can you expand on that is like are you it's just kind of interacting with so many people who are very kind of particular and very firm each one in their own way just kind of learning to deal with them and learning to kind of work with them over years because now it's been um actually we're just preparing for a show by sogra kurasini and sogra was the second show we did at the gallery yeah. so like working with her over 7 years yeah. is just it's been a lot of learning a lot of fun yeah. you know that kind of she's amazing so, she's yeah. my senior she's amazing So yeah she takes a lot and Baroda and she yeah. she's nuts she's amazing so um, also yeah. like you know these the, you've been you know like for take sogra for example she works on wood cuts it's such a painful process right so right. When, when someone buys the work i just you know you know when what exactly are they buying are they are they buying the object the idea the artist's madness you know the brand i don't know the current vogue you know self help well, therapy what exactly oh, oh, what, what exactly are all they, of it No, no, but it, all of it, it right? When, like, are you in a way uh, reminding the client uh, that this is what the work represents, or is it? Uh, of course, yeah. And and speech? whenever a client buys an artwork, we kind of send them a catalog um, with an essay about the artist. We send them like, and then and then follow up. We also, if an artwork gets published in a magazine or in a newspaper, we try and send that to the client as well. Did did your did your like did you start the gallery with a like some I don't know personal mission like some as as like a counter to something or like were you ups- I don't know I don't want to lead you well so 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 well we I opened the gallery in two thousand fourteen um and uh, as as everyone knows the Indian art market had gone through a terrible time in two thousand nine yeah. um and uh, kind of the mission of the gallery was to actually give younger artists a serious place to show work uh and and this is why it's important to have more galleries right the more galleries there are the more spaces there are that show younger artists work. um or show different artists work because there are more voices than there are galleries and there need to be more galleries to kind of amplify the voices at the same time though there are a lot of voices that do not need galleries for amplification right there are a lot of people who are practicing yeah artists who are doing a fantastic job on their own kind of amplifying what they what they are trying to say yeah um and I think also, as I said in the beginning, if someone is confident and able to do what I think I'm able to do, more power to them. And especially with things like social media, the fact that it's so easy to have your own website, um, all those things are now important in kind of pushing one's own career forward, which are very yeah incredible. But, gen, gen, but then my question to you is generally, what are you bringing on the table? over and above because you're now competing you almost have a marketing tool like like the website and this like i want to like just kind of like go a little deeper because if all this exists yeah then you know because the bulk of the viewers on the channel 
and the people who listen mm. to the podcast they're like super young they just you know they're the hopeless covid batch that's trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel right. they didn't get a proper yeah, show yeah i think i think we are all the hopeless covid batch trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> yeah that's true. that's true we're all hustling in a way and yeah somewhere somewhere um you know they they don't know whether they can do see that you're just be bang on there are very few galleries right there are very mm-hmm. few, there are many more voices so what advice would you give to the younger upcoming art student who's like who's not going to get a spot in your gallery or if they are sending the pdf right you know like indro sir said like yeah. stop sending 50 mb pdfs so is there- i agree with indro sir please like send me a link if you have a 50 mb pdf <laughs> no no upload I'll, it to your dropbox and send me a link to that I'll, I'll it's t- much easier to look at I'll, but uh, do you do that do you you know there are uh, stories when i was in art school and i just got out people were like koi nahi dekhta tera cv koi kuch nahi dekhta it's all no we we do we actually we look at the info email address we we keep a close eye on it hmm. actually there's a there's an art there's a photographer called zishan Latif, who actually uh, we did a show with again in our first year, mm. who I met just because he walked into the gallery and he was like, "Hey, would you look at my work?" And I did, and it, it clicked. Oh, nice. Um, well, that happens, huh? It does, and, and we so we look, we do look at the work. Um, what I would say is, if you're, you know, if you're trying to get a gallery, if you're trying to get someone to show you, take yourself seriously. Yeah. Um, but also be like self critical like look at your own work look at other people's work please be aware of what other people in the art world are doing like That's and cool. now there's no excuse because everything is online don't tell me i live in like you live in goa you can see all the shows in bombay delhi yeah. bangalore calcutta wherever you yeah. can see the sh- i can see the shows in london from my sofa right yeah yeah, yeah. so um you need to be aware of what's happening in the art world um i think you need to be aware of yourself and yeah. where your practice kind of fits in in that art world yeah. um and uh when you approach a gallerist like please please don't send eight gallerists an email on two so everyone can see who you've sent this email yeah. to dear ma'am i really want to work with your gallery i'm like yeah. no bro yeah take the time yeah. find out which gallery works for you yeah. if you know an artist who works at that gallery try and ask the artist hey do you think my work will work for your gallerist what does that mean because we have can you explain that well will it work yes, for me so the, uh, will, will that that point be so just... i so i think each gallerist kind of has a point of view and has a uh, kind of way a style of working and those kind of things right at the end of the day these are very personal uh working relationships if that even makes sense yeah. right yeah. so um you know if like i'm very type a what's type a okay i'm i'm a very type a like uh, i'm very particular about organizing things in a certain way and i think that's one of the things that makes me good at my job okay. um this doesn't mean all the artists we work with are very type a but you have <laughs> to be you know that it's a certain kind of way of working where someone can be like nahi nahi tera nahi jamega uske sath you know something as basic as that yeah. or also something as kind of complex as there are artists we work with who are very similar practice to other artists yeah. right yeah. so i may not take on that practice because i'm like this it's too much of the same thing and i won't be able to do both people just yeah So these are things you should know about a gallery before approaching it. I want to ask you what excites you in an artwork like because the viewers are watching henna it's like people have requested for this. So in a Bro. way you'll get better quality emails up your in your inbox if you just in, in my inbox. If you just articulate this one like what for henna is juicy Pro- juicy for process you. process process process. It's all about process. Like and I'm not saying I'm not saying just making process. I'm also saying practice like yeah. how why do you work why do you make what you make? Yeah. Because for me that process and practice is the most important thing going forward especially if I'm talking to artists who are like 2 years out of school. Mm. Who have no track record, right? It's is not easy but it's easier to work with someone who's been working for 20 years cuz you know they'll continue working in a certain manner. Yeah. That's so with someone who hasn't been working for more than 5 years, I need to know why you're doing what you're doing. True. And then kind of have a conversation. Hopefully yeah. you get better emails now. Yeah. Is there is there something you <laughs> is there is there something you hate as um, 
about being a gallerist like maybe visitor parking or something as small as that or we don't have visitor parking my watchmen are not nice people they are not nice to me also i have to beg them every time i need something done so that is a given is it, there's it, nothing i hate about being a gallerist no okay. it's a lot of fun serio so, it's a lot of fun all right all right it's going well by the way um now i know i'm really enjoying now, it so now so yes. in a way i i already told you that we put out our emails and our contact numbers so the students have been asking the art students of this country yes once and for all correct please let's close this question let's just answer it straight head on what's the best way to show your work to a gallery i'm speaking on behalf of at least 10000 art students <laughs> first make sure you are confident that your work is good okay because if you don't believe in your own work nobody else is going to believe in that's true right okay second figure out which gallery you want to work with there are yeah. several galleries in this country and actually several galleries in the world mm who you can work with that, that's a good right? that's a guys the sky's the limit right we live in a we live in a global society like it's not you're not limited anymore like uh uh senior gallerist was tell, uh, you know is complaining to a senior gallerist about something being hard and he was like you don't know anything we used to send slides to collectors <laughs> you get to send pdfs you know i think i was bitching about pdfs and how it takes so long to make a pdf <laughs> yeah. and then he said we used to send slides by mail yeah. and you would get a reply by mail and you had to wait for it and yeah. so i think uh make the most of of the world that we live in look for galleries everywhere yeah um believe in your own work and then when you reach out to a gallery like don't send a 50 mb pdf make sure everything in your pdf is relevant yes. like if you used to paint uh you know landscapes and the landscapes have nothing to do with what you do anymore because you decided i can't yeah or i don't want to or yeah. whatever something changed in your life remove the landscapes man choose the stronger works yeah. i know artists know which works are stronger yeah it's of much more value to send a gallerist ten very powerful artworks than a hundred questionable artworks that right is... so edit yourself and send it off and um that is golden and i know artists don't like hearing this but also just go out and meet people like become friends with people make um, friends just go <laughs> <laughs> yeah go talk to people like just go talk to someone and be like hey i'm an artist i do this yeah yeah now you're giving general advice <laughs> it's like i no it's will, not even general you, advice like you, you don't know where like where these things come from that's true, right that's true you don't know yeah you never know just by saying hi i'm i'm so and so i'm an artist people be like hey oh my god you know there's there's a there's application for you in this place Oh like hey my wife like my my husband has nothing to do with the art world right oh hey i'm an artist oh my art my wife owns an art gallery it could be as simple as that right like it's small 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 things just go tell people what you do but how many people have art galleries that's another solid question it's like not not <laughs> 10, not enough 10, is the answer 10, not enough maybe 10 or 20 no i know the art the india art fair has like they fill there are so many art galleries we know that yeah I want to ask you one are, question. Huh? We are you are an art gallery in a country, this country. I said this to Indra sir too during our interview. Uh we are speaking in English. Uh 95% of the Indian art students who are artists, aspiring artists, going to be artists representing the future don't speak English and uh, yeah. everything you put out is in English. This that doesn't seem to me at least to be any content out there in the vernacular languages. Let me finish. One minute. Wrong. Finish. Is it wrong? I have the vernacular. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me then rephrase that question. Thank you. Uh, or or you correct me. You publicly <laughs> publicly. Uh, I'll I'll yeah. I'll tell you. No no no. I, my question my it's question is that I understand that we are having this conversation in English and that the the viewers who are going to watch this are also articulate enough and can comprehend English. But there's a ninety five percent population of art students, aspiring artists out there. who will never be able to some gather the guts to even even uh, have a conversation with you forget try making that 50 mb pdf um, in a way but you know h- how is that artist supposed to come up to you 